love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your yeah, jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit of $200, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer, what's good, what man? Up, man? Shit, everything good. How y'all doing, man? I'm chilling. I'm counting your Zoom days, <laughs> man. I'm just letting you know. You about, well, how many, 11? <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> how's your door? Your door. <laughs> Yo, listen, murder. <laughs> I already count. I'm, I'm, you, you got 12 more Zoom days than I on Zoom than I do. I'm handling some personal business. You went to get money. You ain't even throw me 10%. <laughs> you want to eight? You want to eight? You want to eight? While we all starved, yeah. so, you was getting paid twice a day. You got yeah. paid. I'm not getting paid for missing. For missing, it ain't like I'm going to chase no money. I'm not chasing. Some, you want to make me your killer? You know what? Yeah, I'm a, I'm you know what? And see, you ain't throwing right, nigga five right. and say, "Yo, you know what? Killer nine." And then I was thinking about it. I say, "Yo, you know what? That's my." Man, the nigga gave me twenty bands on my birthday, but do that really count for the days <laughs> that you miss? <laughs> yeah, yeah, glow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, glow. <laughs> yeah, you went on. You right, you right. I gotta like, give you the five percent. Like, you right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nigga, that's that's the murder I know. Just take it from ten to five. <laughs> take it from ten. Nigga, just with five percent. Where they do five percent at? That's below minimum wage. That's an agent. That's, a, that's an agent now. You big time now. The agents get five percent. Nah, nah, you you get five when them shit start dribbling into the millions, man. I'm not, I don't know how much you got. Cook, how much you made, <laughs> but you know, I said, yeah. hey, let's say, let my nigga go eat. I ain't even eating, but I ain't. This what we doing? That's fine. I'm cool. I'm cool with it. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Though. Beautiful. Okay, so before we even get into the main sports stuff, yeah, let's just cut to the chase, right? This has been trending all weekend, so I got to get you guys' thoughts yeah. on it. Dre and Michelle announced she's pregnant with Houston Rockets player Jalen Green. Drea is 39 and Jalen just turned 22. How do you guys feel about her announcement? Mm. Mm. I'm going to let Killer go first. Let me let me say this. I love Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia has been extremely good to me my whole life. So, I mean, I'm happy for Drea, actually. Actually, okay. I think I think is I'm happy for her. That's what, that's what I could start with. Let's see where Killer takes it. <laughs> These old bitches got it, man. <laughs> These old bitches, man. These old bitches don't stop, boy. Yo, listen, man. I, the, the best way to describe this is that only way I could describe it for what's going on out here is that these kids, these these young basketball players was kids and they watch these bitches on TV growing up. It's like this, murder. It's like, and I'm not saying, and I don't even know if it would be a stat or if I would have a baby with this person or anything, but it's almost like, yo, you know I back Felicia Rashad, right? <laughs> you, know, you know I got Bill Cosby's TV wife. If we was younger, I'm talking about when we was 21 to 22. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I got, I got, I went and got Felicia Rashad. You know, I'm like, yo, bro, you can't get mad at the female, first of all. Mm -hmm. Second of all, if Dre announced it, my question is this did he co sign it? That's the question. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good statement, Killer. It, what is he saying? Right, because, is he happy? Right. If he, if he likes exactly. it, pause. I love it. <laughs> right, exactly. You, you know, this may be an embarrassing moment because you got to realize 
the mothers of a 22 year old or, t- or 19 at 25 is around, you know, similar to our age, I would say. And, and it's like, you got to realize, the, the, you know who we really would like to talk to? G- Jalen Green's parents <laughs> to see if they <laughs> approve. <laughs> Cause they like, Yo, they probably like, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> what, what the fuck are you doing, my nigga? You know yeah. they're going to keep it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if she have kids. I don't recollect her having kids or anything else. But she does. I do, you know. So, sorry, not to cut you up. off. Yeah, her kid's the same age as Jalen Green. Oh, I take I take exactly. that back then. I take that back then. Kelly. Exactly. This is poor yeah, shot selection. Exactly. This is poor shot selection. Yeah. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas yeah. is shooting a shot. This is poor shot selection. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, my new one. That's sure. my new one right yeah. there. Poor shot selection, yeah, champ. I know you want to shoot your shot. But this is yeah, poor. This is gotta... erratic, right? Ain't that what they call it when yeah. a nigga got the ball and he's palsy out of control? He's just jacking up shots from anywhere? This is erratic. Yeah. And the thing about it is, as much as as, as Dre had done, and, and listen, I have no problem with Dre. Look, look yeah. do your thing, sis. I have no problem with her. But, but I, the thing I remember her most about, more than anything that she's ever done, just Cam, I'm telling you, yeah. I remember. More than any TV or reality show or interview or anything, is when she said, somebody asked her, if, do you consider yourself being a hoe? And she says, Nah, it's a time limit. Your wholeness wears off after a while. After a while, you're not a hoe no more. It just wears off. So uh, I sat there and couldn't believe it. I said, <laughs> well, does it? Is it, a, is it an expiration date or wholeness? <laughs> she said it could be redeemed <laughs> or something like that. It could be redeemed. I, I think right. actually she's the best to ever do it. She's got to be top. She's top two and not two right now. She's top two and not two. I had Lori Harvey first. I'm going to have to bump Lori Harvey down right now. Dre is leading. The, she's leading the way. What do you think? I mean, the, well, I, I mean, if you're going to give props to LeBron scoring at 39, this is scoring at 39, killer. This is late in the game. She's still making it happen. That's a great point. That's an absolute great point. Her and LeBron are the same age. And then what happens is, to be honest with you, Jalen Green been balling, too. Yeah, you know he's he's been doing his thing, so. and she might help him. Like, I'm, I'm not even making no jokes. She might help him. I mean, she's scoring late like LeBron. This is a big score, killer. This is better than the guy that was I, on the Cowboys, right? I, I'm who's the guy that was on the Cowboys? Who Wasn't was she? About? She was dating a guy from the Cowboys. I, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I fool with Drea. So this you, is I mean, a this is a big this is a big deal for Philadelphia. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I, I wish them the best of luck, but I just don't know where her attitude is today. And hopefully, it's a little more. Sim- look, she hasn't been out like you said, Lori Harvey or Larissa or whoever. Um, maybe she simmered down a little bit, and she said, "Yeah, quarter right before it's over, right before forty, I caught him <laughs> because at the end of the <laughs> because <laughs> what." <laughs> yeah, it's it's right before ass. 40 right there <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I caught this I nigga caught yeah like <laughs> you yeah, got him yeah, 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 I got <laughs> right at the day cause you you gotta realize look let's let's just do math and this is what I be telling my niggas who are over 35 and going on 40 or even in their 40s with no kids talking about having kids and I explain to them I dig it you wanna have a kid you wanna leave your legacy you want et cetera et cetera but let's just do the math right now. When that kid is 18 years old, she's going to be 60 almost, 58. And this, you got to go to Paris Teachers Conference and you got to do it. Look, it's, it's, you got an old joint at that point. And don't get me wrong, the older, the time, as time goes on, older ladies are starting to look better than when they did back in the days. You know, the surgery, the eating healthy, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to say and say you have a dud. In 15, 16 years, there's ways to keep yourself together. But at the same time, when you're 22 years old, it's a lot of exploring left to do. And Mm. for me, I don't know either one of them personally. But what what the problem is, is this. If you slip up and 
you when you slip up, and I don't know if that's his girlfriend or not, but go ahead and have another baby. It's going to be a headache with somebody else I'm talking about. Oh, you treat him better than this. That child support. Your child support out the gate. I think right now, personally, she's so seasoned, Drea, that go ahead and act up. The child support play is already in, in progress. She, she didn't find you by accident, or y'all didn't find each other by accident. <laughs> There's plenty of regular niggas out there. Yeah. Yeah, but- <laughs> this ain't no accident, yeah. you know? Word. It's just a yeah. fact. Killer, you ain't say, happy say for Dre you know, Killer is going in the clutch. Killer, this is going in the clutch, Killer. Is, these girls do not find these people by accident. We just talked about this the other day. And, and listen, this is my homegirl. Amber Rose is my homegirl. Like my nigga, we just talked about this recently, how she couldn't find no other ride home. But CJ Stroud, he was the only <laughs> ride available back the whole hotel in the whole world. Oh my God. Just CJ Stroud is the Whoa. only ride Whoa. available. Tesla is <laughs> on back order. Know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is no the only Ubers, car. no lips, there's no friends. This is the only ride back. These girls are seasoned. They seasoned, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know. I'm kind of all over the place because it's still early, but we'll revisit this in a year or two and we'll see what happens. But for Jalen Green, I don't think this is good at all. Me personally, because it's too many other options he's going to have as a 22 year old rising star in the NBA. And not only that, um, and I don't know how many months she is pregnant or so on and so forth, but you make this announcement. When he balling his ass off, <laughs> he wasn't doing it when he was stinking it up. Jalen Green been busting ass the last month or so. Month yeah, and they, a half. she probably turned. She probably turned him up, killer. She from Philly. You saw how Amber Rose turned Kanye up. She turned Ye up. So this is I'm 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 for this a little bit, and re, because I know Let's Drea, see, Mace, Mace. and I want Drea to have a happy life, so I'm I'm kind of for this, killer. Not not the age thing, but I'm for her saying, you know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna my hornness is is passed away, and now she found a good guy. That's that's the dream come true for a woman that says, uh, right? It's like confirmation that you can get that's another Mace. chance. Yeah. I agree with what you're saying. It's, it's for her, for her. But you got to realize, I don't think they're using Amber Rose. And like I said, this is not an Amber Rose slander. This is more power to her. But when you say turn Kanye up, and everybody I'm talking about, I Amber, really hate Amber to talk did about, turn all, Kanye they, up, Kelly. Because they all, listen, I'm not finished. They all, everybody I'm about to name is personal friends of mine. Personal. So if y'all hear this, or somebody sends y'all a clip of this, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm just saying, as we look at it through history. I'm not saying that she didn't turn Kanye up, but then next you go have a baby with Wiz. Then when you don't have a baby with Wiz, don't work out, you go fuck with 21 Savage. And then everybody else in between that I may know that I'm not going to bring up that may not be publicized. Other people I know she messed with, and I'm not dissing her. That's my homegirl. I'm just saying you turn up and peel out. That's the way it goes. And I'm just saying it's this a longevity thing because whether you turn Kanye up or not, talking about Amber Rose, it didn't work out. So that's what I'm talking about. Is this going to work out? And everybody I named, this is no slight, no diss, whether it's 21, whether it's uh, Wiz, which is my brother, Amber, which is my sister. I'm just talking about the history over the net or over the blogs or over the internet the past decade or so. Nah, Killer, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. And let me tell you why. Every time Amber got with somebody, they made the best music of their life. Think of what think of the music Ye was making with her. Think of think of um Hold Up, We Them Boys, right? That was when Wiz was with with Amber. So and 21 did his thing when he was with Amber, right? Niggas made some of the best music. Now. Yeah. Now, now yeah. I'm about to disagree with you. 20, 21 then got popping after Amber. And Wiz was popping that now. The reason I disagree <laughs> with you, I'm not saying they ain't make Hold some up. great music where he was with. Yeah. We don't we boys. boys. I'm not saying they She ain't. gave him that we energy. Did, you see how you see how what he's I'm balling saying? right now, killer? He's balling like that because what Dre is giving him. 
what I'm trying to explain to you is I'm not saying they didn't make great music and he's not balling or anything, but she didn't find them because they were nice guys. They were making good music before they she got with them. If they wasn't, she wouldn't have got with them. And she's not going to go get with a regular nigga. It wasn't like Wiz was some average nigga and she turned him into a superstar. Nah, she met him he's a superstar. He met Kanye, he's a superstar. He met 21, he's a superstar. Yeah, killer. Now, I give... Killer, <laughs> killer. Yeah. Yeah. You don't get yeah. dark, twisted fantasy from dating regular girls. You get that from Amber. Uh, the, f- <laughs> the, f- the mic went out. You don't, don't get, you don't get dark, that. twisted fantasy from dating regular girls. You got that from Amber, you know? You don't get we them boys. You don't feel like that unless you with somebody that make you feel like we them boys. I'm not just disagreeing with what you're talking about, but I am a little bit because why would she get with them prior to that music that you're talking about? Because it was good music before that she got with them. It wasn't like she's like, you know what? I want to wield this nigga's success. Pause. It isn't like, and, and, and pause what I'm about to say. It isn't like when Kuda found you and you was like, this guy got some raw and cut talent. Let me see what I can do with him. <laughs> <laughs> you going to put Kuda with a hammer? <laughs> yeah, that's a, no, that's I'm a, just saying, I said pause. Yeah. I'm just saying pause. You know how niggas build you up to say, okay, this you may not be doing this and you may not be doing right. These niggas was planning up selling artists before they got with Amber. And, it's, and, and listen, because see, it looked like me going in on Amber, and that's my sister. I'm just saying, I like the way she played the game, so I don't want you to say it, think that I'm being disrespectful. I'm just saying, it wasn't like she was like, found the nigga in the bushes and was like, let me clean this nigga up and make him mm-hmm. into somebody else. Now, were they making great music with her or a legendary music when they with her? I do agree with you. But this wasn't like, a, and, and I just don't want to use, I'm using you and Kuda because, you know, we were, you know, I'm using the Kuda because the public, a lot of the public, music-wise, in, in America, where they might catch up today because we have the internet and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But a lot of America, when they first grasp to you, Mace, they don't know Murder Mace. They, you, we forgot your name was Mace Mussolini. So they told us that. <laughs> <I would die. laughs> yeah, that nigga Dave said, yo, am I talking to Mussolini right now? <laughs> yeah, Isaiah, yeah, Dave, yeah, Dave, you went we, you went old school yeah, mega tape. Yeah. Yeah, niggas don't know you was Mace Mussolini now. And you and the reason I bring it up because you documented his songs, you know, school to school me to the day. Yeah. Um, no, and no slight and nothing like, you know, P. Diddy made pretty, not like that, because we, we figured out it's the same thing I'm talking about when I say Pitbull or Flo Rida stop being hardcore rappers. Once niggas find out where they money at, that's where niggas go. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. nigga, nigga, you know, you, you know, I remember when you first got the bad boy and you was on that hardcore shit and then you did the 112 remix and all the girls went crazy and then nigga Puff said, that's it. Mur- all the murder shit just stop. <laughs> stop. It goes out the window. That's that's it. There's no more. Stop with all the murder and all the girls like you with taking murder out the equation. And that's what happened. Yeah. And you sold five million records. Once niggas figure out. So I, I take a situation like that. And I know we're talking about apples and oranges when we're talking about somebody that you're having sex with pause as opposed to somebody who just sees uh, a future in you mm-hmm. as, a, as opposed to a friend. So that's what I'm saying. It isn't like she, they, they did a coup to love. Like, uh, let me see what I can, what I can taste in it. Cause he got all the intangibles. He's just not pointing them in the right direction. It's mm-hmm. like a nigga with all the skills in the world. And then he'd be like, yo, let me show you how to shoot from the elbow. Let me show you, like when you in the box, you could do this. So you yeah. get what I'm saying? That's yeah, how I, I get, take it. So I'm not disagreeing saying. with you. Yeah, I'm but not shout out to Philly. You, Philly yeah, doing their thing. Yeah, I'm not mad at them all. And everybody I named, I love y'all. There's no slight. We're just talking about what we've seen over the few last few years. I just hope she has a safe pregnancy. Um, for me, it's not even like the situation I hand or the age gap because it's like that's been happening. It's just the context of how things happen, like then her videos resurfacing of like, oh, how her wholeness has deleted. It's just a lot of other things that I just feel like are unnecessary 
to the situation, which is what makes it seem worse. No, I think like, does. I think it's actually good because if she said her wholeness is deleted, and now she finds a good guy, and a, yeah, but and the, a really her wholeness is guy. deleted on her terms. That you get what I'm like. It's just certain things are just kind of like okay. Once, once you get on the internet, <laughs> let me tell yeah. you something. Once you get on the internet, nothing's deleted. Facts. Yeah, it's so facts. <laughs> it so, is. So once you like, that's why you got to pick and choose what you say moving forward. Because look. It's shit that I said in 06, 07, 08 <laughs> that, that'll resurface. But nobody knew the internet in 07, 08, 09 was going to turn into the monster it is today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm like, I'm like, yo, man, I don't feel like hearing about what I said in 06, man. I didn't, I yeah. wasn't even thinking that we were going to bring it up in 2023, <laughs> right. 2024. But it is just what you said. So now we live in a society to where if, and, it, and it almost it almost doesn't even matter about death. You know what I'm saying? Like people will find a way to make a joke or bring something up to stir up controversy because they can. You know, yeah. it's like, and I'm not and I'm not jumping out the window because it's just last thing I'll say about this as far as internet shit. And I'm talking about I bought death up. It's like when Nipsey died and Kodak. Was like, damn! I wonder what Laura London doing right now. Like three yeah. days after he died, niggas was mad at Kodak yeah. and all that. It's to the point where if that shit gets captured on tape, it's going to get bored up again. To where you gonna have niggas mad or angry or on his side or sneak laughing or whatever. Once it goes on the net, mm-hmm. it's on the net. That's why I tell niggas like, you know. If you ever in a situation, you know, it's a time niggas just start screaming, niggas fight world star, world <laughs> yeah. star, like, you know what I'm saying? So even if you're in a situation these days and niggas is about to jump your son, you might as well just go all out because it's being recorded somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Period. We just in the era where it's always, it's always a camera around, whether it's a ring camera, whether it's somebody phone, whether it's anything. Something is always going to be captured, so be careful what you say. Pick and choose wisely. Yeah, so with that being said, I know if this was a guy, it would not be accepted. It would not be accepted. If a if a well-known guy was 39 and he got a girl pregnant that was probably like 21, people would not be feeling it. So, like, I'm wondering if pregnancy is that big factor because there's a, there's a lot of big age gap relationships that it, like, for example, yes, it's a guy, but LaMelo Ball and his girl, he's 22, she's 34. Jay-Z and Beyonce are like 13, 14 years apart. Like, it's kind of the same well, situation. Well, we know but, what that's about. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. Same type of situation, same age gap. It's just... <laughs> let, 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 me, let me ask you, Stan. You 22 uh, years yeah. old. Would you date a nigga 39? No. No. All right. <laughs> what if he got Riz? I don't care. <laughs> okay. It's old I Riz. Don't care. Huh? Yeah. I would not. Like the thing is, in, in Jalen Green's situation, he's in the NBA. You can mess with whoever you want to mess with. I'm yeah. sure he had a biggish crush on Drea. And if that kept, you know, if that was tight lipped, they were doing their thing, cool. But it's when you bring stuff to light and to public, I just feel like that's not the type of things that we need when he's in the middle of playing in the season. Like it's just so much unnecessary distractions that like nobody needs right now like mm-hmm. as long as he continues that's, to play well it. cool like i don't care what he does that's i don't care who point. he messes with you can mess with whoever you'd like she could be four i don't care but it's like she could be once four. you she could be 40 oh, but once you, you said four. once you bring you know a baby into the picture and then you make things public and then her life is already public for already doing other things it's just an unnecessary amount of attention towards you when you really should just be playing. That's just how I feel. Because I think you can mess with whoever you want to mess with. Point. I agree with you, <laughs> Stats. Wow. Finally, I agree with you. <laughs> I really do. I think that's a great point, yo, because at the end of the day, uh, God, God willing, everything healthy and so on and so forth, you could have brought this up later. Yeah. Not dead smack at, towards the uh, playoff run. I don't know if Houston's going to make the playoffs, but the season is 20 games left. And I don't know if Houston's making the playoffs. You can announce this when the season's over. Right. That's exactly how I Next feel. Next month. Yeah. I that's that exactly how point. I feel. I like yeah. That. So congrats to both of them. I hope she has a safe pregnancy, but it's just the timing. That's what I was saying. The timing was just like, why now? Like I get it. Cause she's seven months. She could have done it 
five months ago or even after when the baby was delivered. So I don't know. That's my opinion. But um, moving along. The Warriors lost to the Spurs on Saturday, 126 to 113 with Steph and Wemby out. What does this tell you about both teams? They lost how much? 126, 126 to 113. 113. Home or away. Um, this is right, horrible. Yeah. This is really horrible, no matter where it happened, because when you think of the Warriors, these these are not games you should be losing. The Warriors have enough um, talent and Hall of Famers on future Hall of Famers on the team that they should not be losing to random players on yeah. the Spurs. And it was not the Warriors court. Yeah, you <laughs> should you should not be losing this. And especially I, I look at if Steph wasn't playing, Chris Paul was playing, Chris Paul, get the win. Clay Thompson, you need a contract, get the win. Draymond, you back full circle. Get the win. Anybody on this team, Kamanga, what's his name? Kaminga. Yeah. Kaminga could have won this game. Anybody on um the Warriors could have won this game. There's no reason to lose to the Spurs ever, uh, ever right now until they get two more players. They should not be losing, especially when we need these wins to go into the playoffs and, and get a better seating in the play in. Make no sense. Steve Kerr got the money and he's just chilling. This is what I'm feeling. Um, just a mirror who's been going on all, all year long. Stuff been carrying this team basically by itself. Um, and I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised whatsoever. I know that Wemby wasn't playing and stuff wasn't playing, but Mason said everything that I probably would have said. Um, you got too many championship players and coaches, coaching staff on the Golden State Warriors. Don't get me wrong. We're not going to act like Steve Curry and come under the Popovich umbrella when it comes to coaching. And he also played for Pop. So uh he knows Steve Kerr very well, and Steve Kerr knows Pop, Popovich very well. But at the end of the day, it's just a reflection of what's been going on all season long. Steph has literally at 35 years old, carrying this team on his back. And it's sad to see um, a team, a dynasty that we once loved go out this way, dead right right in front of our eyes. Uh, anything could happen in the playing and the playoffs, but right now, this is just speaking to us watching Golden State uh, evaporate basically so to speak in front of our eyes i don't really have too much to say about it because i don't know how many game stuff curry missed this season but i wouldn't yeah. say that they won any without him you get what i'm saying so this is not good you, my personal, i gotta call e40 this is not good <laughs> my personal opinion is this this is what i think i don't know who golden state is going to get in this off season or who they can lure to uh, to the Bay to play with Steph in his golden years or Draymond because Draymond's still under contract. But if I was Golden State, and I think this would be good for both, I would look into seeing maybe a three three team trade. But then again, it wouldn't even be a trade because Clay's contract is expiring. But I think Clay would do much better with a fresh start with the Knicks. My personal opinion, the Knicks mm. need a shooter. Clay, Clay is used to the big city and under the lights, he performs well. And right now, uh, it's not working in Golden State. Sometimes Who would they get back, though, start. Killer? Who would they get back? Well, his contract's expiring. So that's why yeah. I was, I was oh, talking okay. about a three way, a three, a, a three team trade because yeah, I don't right. think the Knicks have any pieces, but his contract is up and they should probably explore that because Clay's already willing to take a pay cut to stay in Golden State. But right now, I think that Clay was playing bad this season, but not just bad. I think now it's mental the way mm -hmm. he needs a fresh start. Maybe, maybe it'll summer off and he come back Golden State, have a fresh start. But right now, as a basketball player, nothing is worse than mentally not being there because you're thinking about, is this shot going to go in? Are you thinking about, damn, I'm one for eight? You know, when you're playing well and you have them off games like Steph Curry, uh, even though he didn't play in the second half against the Celtics, he was like 0 for 9 from 3. When you're a great shooter, that doesn't bother you. 
But when you're having a season of that, it starts to become mental, especially when you're a shooter. Clay, and I don't know if it's too late in his career or not, he needs some moves. Anything he needs to do this offseason is to work on his handle and create a space when he shoots or learning how to get to the basket. He has not improved in that area in 12 years, however long he's been in the NBA. He's been such an elite shooter, catch and shoot. All he needs is two seconds with the ball before he releases, pause. And now it's affecting his game to where he can't get a nigga off him if they shadow on him. So I think to me, uh, and I'm not saying that it happened, but I think a great landing spot would be the New York Knicks. They got mm-hmm. a good core right there. Jalen Brunson is busting, busting ass. Uh, when Rand, when Randall is there, he's playing pretty decent. If they had an elite shooter, I'm talking about Clay Thompson in the past. Yeah. This could put them in a category with, with, uh, Boston, Milwaukee and Philly when Joe Olympi gets back. And I'm not saying it'll put them over the top. But at least moving into, you know, making predictions for the season, they would be somebody to talk about making the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, I think that's a, a great place for him. I think even um Dallas will be great for him with two slashes. You got two people that attack the basket with, with aggression. Those threes will be wide open if he can make them as well as Orlando would be another good place for him that will really value him, give him a bunch of money, and he can kind of, you know, help that core of team try to win in the East. Right. And then upon his return to the G League, Isaiah Thomas dropped 32 points in his debut. What do you guys think about his return? I told you, killer. (laughs) I told you. What you told me? What you told me? Yeah, Isaiah. What, what did you tell me? I told you he still could play. Who said that he couldn't play? Did, what, did, what are you telling me? You know, I, I never said he couldn't play. I said him getting back to the real NBA is not realistic. That's what I said. What did you tell me? I'm trying to figure out what did you tell me. I, didn't, I never said the points, I, I killer, gave, killer. You I, gave him a low. You I gave, gave him a low amount of points, killer. I'm just saying the man had 32. About? Okay, what I, I said he wouldn't score thirty two in the G League. I have a say. I, what did I say? I ain't stat now. You I don't have stat. time for did this. I, say, I, don't, I don't have time you know, for this. You know, I really, I don't have time for this either. I really don't. I don't have time for it either. Do you have your stat, notes with you, killer? Do you have your notes? I don't. Need, my notes is up here. I'm not good. <laughs> I'm not good. I don't need my notes. I'm not good. <laughs> I'm not good, bro. <laughs> all i said was that <laughs> I, look, I even said that jamal crawford came on this show and said isaiah thomas wakes up in the morning practices goes in the afternoon practices he can bring stability to a young locker room Mm -hmm. and we're wishing him well. But I say, you said you think it can happen. And I said, I didn't. Did I say he couldn't play? I never said that. I said at 34. No, we found out he was 35 years old. Yeah. That's what happened. And then I said, and you put the nail in his coffin at 35. Killer, you did. If if that's the way you want to put it, put it, then fine. I did. Okay. I sat there and said it's not real. I'm not realistic for him to get back in the NBA. That's exactly what I said. Mm-hmm. Now, did, didn't I say at the end of it? I hope he gets back in the NBA. That's exactly what I said. But yeah. as far as him getting back in the NBA, I just don't think it's realistic. Now, I think 32 points, especially for a debut, is outstanding. I was definitely outstanding yeah. for a 35 years, 35 year olds. Outstanding. Is this going to translate to him? Being picked up by a team. That's the question. Um, let me and let I'm me ask you that. this because this is it is what it is. So the things we say, people follow what we say. What team do you think he'll he can he can contribute to right now? Going into the playoffs. What team could use him? See, that's what we talked about also when we talked about this. Is that rosters get shortened when the playoffs come. They play seven or eight people. And right now, I'm pretty sure that playoff that the teams that are going into the playoffs are pretty much starting to get their roster or their their rotation in 
in uh, order right now to see who they're going to be playing. Mm-hmm. Denver played seven niggas last playoff. Seven niggas. Reggie Jackson yeah. got no burn. Mm-hmm. Zero burn. And no disrespect, I would pick Reggie Jackson over Isaiah today I'm talking about. I would pick him over him. And he didn't get any play. So in the playoffs, he would have to be a backup's backup, which Reggie Jackson was, because you had Jamal Murray, then you had Bruce Brown coming off the bench, and then Reggie Jackson only got run when them niggas was in foul trouble or injured or whatever the case may be. Now, he ate the, he, he accepted that because he was leaving the Clippers where he was getting a lot of minutes, but now he's a great backup this year to uh, Jamal Murray, just as good as Bruce Brown, if you ask me. But um, the question is, I don't know that because right now, to me, teams are getting their rotation in order and maybe he could make a 12 man spot for the playoffs which i doubt that too but who would he help for the playoffs i don't have an answer for that right now because i don't know who's rotation you got to realize the playoffs about to start in a month these teams have been playing together since october so they got chemistry for nine months now if you want to slide somebody in there for the playoffs and hope they figure out how other players mm-hmm. play, which if their job is professionals, that's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Cool. But I just don't really see it happening. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. To answer your question, Mace, I was so long winded because I'm sitting here trying to think we can help out. Like even you said last week and I didn't get to elaborate on it, but you was like Phoenix. And I'm like, they got Eric Gordon. They got Eric Gordon coming off the bench. And yeah. it's like, yo, who, who, who would he fit with this year? Yeah, it's like when and next you, year he's gonna be thirty six. So yeah. next year he's gonna be thirty six years old. Yeah. No, nah, you're right about that. I just think when it comes to playoffs, you know how when when you get locked dead locked in a series and teams start playing really good defense, and you just need somebody that can add twelve points or ten points off the bench, that that makes the difference in a series. So it's like you know. He could be that person for a, a lot of teams that could come in and just get you eight points when you really needed that eight, like a guaranteed can I, can I give you an, basket. Right. Let me get. Can I give you an example? Yeah. Of somebody who did that and it didn't work. Who? The only person I know that came in late in the season. Matter of fact, it was March, right before the playoffs, and it still didn't work. Was Michael Joy? Mike came back in March <laughs> with the forty-five on his shit. <laughs> Started balling and got picked <laughs> and got bumped. <laughs> got bumped. bumped. The highest of the highest and didn't work for a murder. <laughs> we talking about the highest of the highest. It didn't work out for them. <laughs> you know, shit, niggas got sent home, bro. That's Mike. Yeah. He came back in March. And it didn't work out, bro. So, no, I don't think he can help anybody right now. <laughs> if Mike couldn't do it, why would uh, I think Isaiah point. Thomas could do it? That's a fair point. But also, no, that's not anything, a fair point. It is, that, though, because if no, Mike couldn't do it, then what means about, he's going to be able to do it? We're not talking about starting. But we're talking about coming off the bench. Just contributing to the team. Yeah, I was going to say anything is possible because we're the Heat about, signed Patty Mills. Like, he's 35, and we, like, I don't know why <laughs> we made that decision, but Patty I guess if Mills. Mill gets hurt, then. We have an option just in case. Yeah, it's you like, know why? Because Patty Mills, could, <laughs> Patty Mills, Patty Mills could shoot. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that Isaiah Cameron Thomas can't shoot, but Patty Mills, you hit him, give him that wide open three, he can shoot. Now he played for the Spurs, you know. Right. I know that nigga, and he was good, good when he went to Brooklyn. He can shoot. Patty Mills can shoot. It isn't like if you you not saying that uh, Isaiah can't hit a three, but he's not a elite shooter like Patty yeah. Mills is there. For spot up threes. Now, Mace, why isn't Michael Jordan a good point? Go ahead. Listen, back to you. No, I was saying because <laughs> we're not talking about a starter. Jordan was a starter. This is just coming in for 10 minutes, eight points. That's it. It's not nothing else. Jordan was 40 minutes. We're not asking him to do 40 minutes. We're asking him to be good for 10 minutes. Pause. Oh. Well, give me an example of somebody it worked out for, <laughs> so we can we can kind of relate it. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I'm going to give you any example that you're talking about where this worked out. <laughs> we rely on you, Murder, to tell the truth. <laughs> no, I'm saying it, happened, it really hasn't been done on a high level, but I'm saying okay. he, could, he could be okay. the first to do that, you know? Or, or listen... Or listen, to Stats point, we never could count the heat off in the heat out in the playoffs. Now, if Patty Mills come through and start hitting some clutch threes, he could be the first <laughs> yeah. to make it happen. I don't care. I don't sleep on the heat in the playoffs, man. Them niggas regular season, it'd be like, ah. Yeah, it's the like playoffs whatever. Come for some reason, yeah, it's whatever. For some reason, you you sit there and watch the heat and you're like, oh, they made out the first round. The next thing you're like, wait, they be yawning? They in the Eastern? How did the Heat get in the Eastern? <laughs> wait a minute, the Heat's in the championship? Like, so when it comes to the Heat the last four years or five years or so, I don't ever count them out when it comes to the playoffs because for some reason, they always make it in the playoffs for the last few seasons. And don't get it fucked up. A, a lot of it is because of injury, too, on the other team. You know, they get injured. But the reason why I, I, you know, that needs to be named. But the reason why I don't give it an excuse is because Jimmy Butler plays hurt a lot in the playoffs. Limping, beat up, beat up, bat, batted, pause. That nigga goes hard and doesn't make excuses in the playoffs and then rarely misses games. And if he misses a game, he'll, he'll force himself to play the next one. So I don't count the heat out in the um, playoffs. So maybe we'll see the first with Patty Mills this year. We'll wait and see what happens. The Heat is always I, I like that that take. The Heat is always beating niggas that are hurt though. It, it's not they never really beat niggas. You always that have are the full. take that's like, whoa, no, no. maybe this person's doing this, or maybe they're using this. Yeah. I think they're just good. No, <laughs> I mean when they beat Giannis them, somebody was hurt. Who was hurt? Giannis was hurt. Giannis okay. and Chris yeah. Middleton was hurt on different years. And then when they beat the when same they time, beat Boston, yeah. Tatum was hurt. Yeah, everybody they beat when we say playoff Jimmy Butler, and I'm for the playoff Jimmy Butler. I'm just saying they be beating teams that are hurt. That's a good observation. But at the same, yeah, that's a great observation. But at the same time, that ain't his fault. Yeah, you right. We watch Chris Paul get we get hurt in the playoffs, and we be like, oh, this nigga here. Yeah, you right. Years in a row getting hurt. Look, everybody know the playoffs is coming, and sometimes your body betrays you. It just that's just the way it go, nigga. You, you know them niggas probably be home mad as shit. I would be mad as shit, bro. When the playoffs come, I always get hurt, and then to the point where I can't even play. It's like that year, Anthony Davis was so hurt he played like two minutes just to prove he was hurt. <laughs> like you remember that year yeah. he was so hurt, this and then they let him come out on the court thing. for like ninety seconds, and then they was like just just sit down, my nigga, because. He uh, wanted to prove that he was hurt to the crowd because the crowd always accused him of being hurt. But it was so obvious that he was really hurt that he had to come out and play, and it was just ridiculous. I can't get mad at the Heat, even though I did bring that up that everybody they beat gets hurt. It's not they fault. We gotta, y'all niggas got to take care of your body. Listen, LeBron James is 39 years old and maybe missed seven games this year, maybe six. They're like, yo, he's 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 going out. And I like that because he knows his career is coming to the end. Whenever that is, you know, we don't really see the light at the end of the tunnel just yet. But he like, nigga, I got to cherish every moment. Because at the end of the day, these ain't going to be around all the time. You know, these niggas is in the playing right now. LeBron James and them niggas fighting for their playoff life. And he yeah, playing like that. So that's just my opinion. But everybody know the playoffs is coming up. So look at Joel Embiid. They talking about. Joe LMB might be coming back. Oh. He might be coming back this season. And, and right now, Philly's in sixth place, which means they don't even got to play in the play in. So imagine <laughs> Joe LMB come back to me. That's, I know I, I give him a lot of, a lot of <laughs> slack because he be crying like a big baby and all that shit sometimes. But to me, that's a nigga who want to win. That's a nigga who want to win. 
And that's why the best ability is availability. Okay, we're going to go to break. I want to say that. I, I, I didn't want to say that. I was it's going, the truth. I, I was going, that was behind yeah, the scenes was, saying I, a lot of stuff. <laughs> Stat, say what you said when no, your no, mic was You say what you thought I said. <laughs> no. Yeah, but, Nope. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. nope. We're gonna go to break and when we return, y'all we'll niggas, talk to y'all two. Niggas is the y'all are, are depriving our audience. That's what y'all doing, having secret conversations. That's what I tell you. Go ahead and say it, It's not a secret conversation. That said, <laughs> while you were saying that, Stat said it's not Dre's fault. Just like it's not their fault. <laughs> Dre, oh, she brought Dre back up. <laughs> she said it's not our fault. Nope. Listen, <laughs> nobody said it's Dre's fault. I think, look, if people took that take the wrong way because I just wanted to have some banter with Mace, you know, sometimes <laughs> I just try to make sure he's still where he need to be. But at the end of the day, if people if people took my take the wrong way, I'm giving niggas props. Dre, Amber Rose, Lawson, all them niggas, I'm more mad at the niggas. I'm not mad. I'm not taking I'm just talking about me and Mace was going back and forth about how niggas with the, the height of their music. Maybe that's a stat we could go look up when they sold more records with them or without them. That's all it's about. But as far as the girls, I ain't got no problem with listen, you cannot get mad at Dre or Amber or Lassa, even though as a nigga, I'ma say my point of view. But how are you gonna get mad at niggas? How you how, you can't get mad at them females? These niggas is going for it. First of all, what club are y'all in that y'all all the same, these, these different age gaps that y'all are in the same place? Where y'all at together? <laughs> I ain't gonna be in no club with nigga 21. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Unless I'm that's gonna get paid to grab some money. That's how it be. Yeah, well, that's when you invite, but, but that's the, you know how it be, stat? See, you're saying that now. All right, let me get, see? Now let's get to this stat. You're saying that now because yeah. you're a, a you're a star host on It Is What It Is, and you have your own show on Fridays at three o'clock. Or check out the stat. And we them niggas. I'm talking about all three of us as a collective. So now your invites are a little different. So now you act <laughs> bougie. You get a killer. Now now you win the parties with Kevin Durant. Rich Paul, <laughs> yeah. this football player, that football player. So now you talk about that's how it be. Two years ago, when you was in the she University was, of Miami, yeah. you was in the frat well, parties. She was no, in the she was was with the Zetas. The thing, she was though. arguing that's with the Zetas. Thing. Miami was a little different yeah. from most colleges, though. I yeah, won't man. lie. You so was, was arguing like, I with seen the Zetas. It was a little different. You was okay, arguing so with Zetas you, and you see, Delta. You was in there. You was in. So when you was in Miami. You was in the club with Kevin Durant and Rich Paul and 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 Adam Silver and, and that, 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 that specifically, with? but it was a lot of people out of Miami that I won't disclose that you would be like, oh, because that's just the, that's just how the lifestyle was. That's just Miami, and you won't <laughs> stack, disclose stack. it. Nope, not disclosing any yeah. names. Uh, I'm oh not my goodness! That. Yeah, <laughs> let's take your a, own. Matter of fact, I would like on Twitter <laughs> go to the is what it is page. And we're going to take a poll. I'm going to put it up. <laughs> pause. After this show. Yeah, with that Stat in them clubs with them yeah. niggas. I said, yeah, pause. Before she, before she graduated or after she graduated? Definitely was. What better crowd was, was she around? I'm just asking. I definitely I'm was. I'm not saying you wasn't. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's we're college. Take a poll. <laughs> that's college. If you don't, if you don't want to disclose the information, we only have to speculate. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to take a poll speculate. on speculate. <laughs> Y'all can speculate yeah, everything because they will do that regardless. Speculate. There okay. you go. We're going to take a poll for us. <laughs> Bet. Okay. We're going to go to break. And when we return, we will discuss the future of sports media. Don't go anywhere. She called this thing about toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Warriors will play the Spurs in what could be a redemption 
Underdog Fantasy has Wemby at 22 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower? Mace? Higher. Cam? Yeah, I'm going to go high. He, he had the night off already. He should be fresh. Yeah. Hey. It's like if the if they beat them niggas without Wemby, Wemby got to come in and, and go crazy. Pause. Okay. Draymond Green is at five and a half assists. Do you have him higher or lower? Cam? Higher, definitely. Yeah, higher. Okay. And Jonathan Kaminga is at 30 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. I'm higher or lower, Mace? Lower. Lower. I ain't got a nigga doing that much. Pause. Okay. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So Shannon Sharp revealed he made more hold money. On real, hold on, real, hold on yeah. real quick. Stat. Sorry. Yo, big shout out to Underdog Fantasy. If you're in North Carolina, y'all can now bet with Underdog Fantasy. They just launched their sports book out there. So big shout out to Underdog. Everybody in North Carolina, make sure y'all go check out Underdog Fantasy. Cold Cam. Uh, yeah, Cold Camp's still in the building. They got NBA <laughs> coming up, man. Facts. <laughs> okay. Shannon Sharp revealed he made more money from the Cat Williams interview than any other year in his football career. So when you hear that stat or that quote from him, what do you guys think the future of sports media is? Mm. If you if you can make more money than you can make in an NFL career. That's that's pretty huge, and congratulations. Uh, up here, we're only for the truth, and we're only for celebrating people that do things the right way and get it the right way. So I'm really happy for him and his entire team that that work even behind the scenes. That's a, a good feat, and hopefully he, he will be able to keep that up. I think he set the pace for where sports media can go, uh, and shout out to him and Stephen A and everybody else. All, what's that? All the smoke. Who else? Gilbert Arenas. I, it just seemed like it's going somewhere great, and it's gonna it's gonna be even bigger, independent. And I think that's what we're a part of. I think is it's gonna be a a billion dollar company. We'll be right there with ESPN. <laughs> I mean, if you, yeah. if you well, ask when, me, when you said, you know, I'm, I'm dreaming, you know, yeah. pause. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I heard that shit, I started doing the Stevie Wonder, but <laughs> I smell money. <laughs> yeah. I, I smell money, baby. When I start doing that, I start doing this, man. <laughs> yeah. Get up. Yeah. Let, share and let them know what's going on out yeah. here, man. You got to realize, you got to let niggas know what's going on out here because you got to realize, look, look, I would love to hear, you know, and, not no funny, funny shit, but not really funny shit. Where, where, like, skip Bayless conversations with his wife, because he always talks about his wife, like, his yeah. best friend, which I think is super dope. About him putting on Stephen A. Smith, well, not putting them on, bringing them back to media, and Shannon Sharp. Probably the two highest niggas in sports right now. Um, from a from a um analyst for me from an analytic standpoint or a TV show or ratings or popularity or anything else, and Skip Bayless brought them back and now they don't fuck with them. Neither one of them. That gotta hurt, yo. That gotta hurt, man. That really man. gotta hurt, my nigga. That I think I think they I think, they, I, think St- St- I think Stephen A. should bring Skip on his show. I mean, you know. They was talking about that a few years ago when Max Kellerman was still on the show. But I think me personally, the Stephen A passed Skip's personality. Like, I yeah. think he got Mad Dog up there. And I'm not saying Mad Dog is Mad, Mad Dog is Skip. It's a different, it's a different ball game. But I think he kind of got a cooler Skip, you know, cause Skip yeah. is going to say shit to just drive you crazy. We don't know what Skip comes in with because Skip, we figured them out. You say the illest shit to get the craziest response. You know what I'm saying? I remember Skip was on first take and him and Stephen A. Smith was going back and forth about nigga, the word nigga. And Skip Bayless was trying to tell Stephen A. that N-I-G-G-E-R 
is racist, but he doesn't feel N I G G A is racist. And Stephen A is trying to tell this nigga, he said, <laughs> when you go in the, when you in the hood, my nigga, you don't got time to say how you s- pronounced it when you call a nigga a nigga when you white. You walk yeah. up to if you walk up any black white nigga, yo, what up, my nigga? And you be like, nigga, I'm like, what? Oh, nah, I didn't say nigger. I said, my nigga not gonna care, my nigga. And he made a big deal out of this <laughs> shit for like three weeks. But you know, he say shit to keep on, you know, I think Stephen A grew out of that. But shout out to Shannon Sharp. Congratulations on what he's doing. But what I will say is this before I go. I believe that, and they have it listed as this. I believe his show with Nightcap um, is a is a sports show. I don't consider Club Shay Shay a sports show, and they got it under the sports category. He's a sports, a former NFL player, interviewing other niggas that not necessarily always in sports. He interviews comedians, actors, TV personalities, so on and so forth, but they got it in the sports category, which is fine. I don't care. I'm just making an observation, yeah. but I don't really think that's a sports show. Whatever it is, get that money, nigga. I ain't mad at that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's great to have a, a diverse portfolio. You know, I might I might go right, into the absolutely. I might wear a tuxedo and start interviewing niggas at night. Pause. Do hey, my yeah, night nah, show. That's crazy. That, that's crazy, man. <laughs> I might put on a tuxedo and start interviewing. Niggas. That was pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> interviewing niggas at yeah. night. Huh? Cam say, <laughs> yeah. Cam, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Cam <laughs> said, take a poll. We're going to take a poll like three <laughs> you times. You can't even we recover from fly. that. I take usually a poll got you, but tuxedo. that was that. Take a poll and tuxedo <laughs> is not even on the same level. Come on, <laughs> stat. <laughs> I'm gonna start interviewing okay, niggas. Okay, stat, <laughs> stat. You really want to go there, stat? No, you really want to. You, you want to booby trap me? I do not. You want to booby trap me? <laughs> like I'm thinking, they start making tell her what she wants. Take it to her, damn. Let her get what she wants. Yo, this nigga murder ready to take everybody out because she said he want to put on a tuxedo and interview niggas at night. <laughs> he ready to kill everybody, yo. That's wild. No, I, I figured out. I figured out what what sports shows and stuff is about. Like on the internet it seemed like everybody just say the most outrageous thing just for just to make the news I guess I didn't know that at first yo fam yeah and not not just what they say fuck what they say it's yeah. the clickbait you I'm, yo fam I be scrolling past <laughs> shit and they be like so and so says so and so calls out Mason Camp so I'm like this nigga, I ain't got no problem with this nigga. Let me click on. <laughs> then, then you click on, and they be like, makes a cam doing they thing, man. And, 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 and I'm like, man, I got it. But he got, he baited me. <laughs> the clickbait is wow, yo. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving along, Francis Ngannou was knocked out in the second round by Anthony Joshua in a brutal loss over the weekend. Was this the outcome you guys expected? I definitely did not expect a second round knockout. I he performed pause so so well against Tyson Fury. I thought he would be um better than this, but I could see this happening now in hindsight because when he was fighting Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury was so taller than him, he was able to do what Mike Tyson does, like weave under the hook and and you know, hit him in the body and stuff like that. But when he was fighting Joshua, it was like eye level. It was like fighting somebody in your 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 class and your height. And I, and you see this a lot with Tank. Like when he was fighting Pitbull, it seemed like a much more difficult fight than when he was fighting Ryan because he was so much taller. Sometimes when a fighter is taller, you have an advantage if you can time the hook and all of that type of stuff. But I definitely did not have him going out at, in two rounds and make you kind of rethink the whole thing like uh, is he really supposed to be over here and we will find out what he's made of after this because it's nothing like seeing what a fighter becomes after they're knocked out i am yet to see a fighter that gets knocked out and return 
other than Kodo. Yeah, it, it has been a few. Kodo and Pacquiao that really returned and really fought the same. Every time somebody get knocked out, it seemed like they become a whole different fighter. What's the name? That's a great take. I have some words from my fans. One of our fans, let's see if y'all can hear this. <laughs> Kim, we can't hear it. <laughs> Thank you for trying to booby trap. Uh, Thank you for trying to booby trap. We're going to play it live. I'm glad. It says, <laughs> it says that Mace said that, and, and however you pronounce his name, is going to win the fight. <laughs> Not only, not only win by knockout, and then the <laughs> fan was so upset. He said, "Damn, Mace, I thought you was always right. We supposed to depend on you to send the truth." Who is this guy? I told you they watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna send it. Kim, I'm, who is this guy? You, you know, saying, I have no, I have no idea who he is. I have no idea who he is. This is the I'm trying. This is the shit I be trying to tell y'all that people are watching y'all. <laughs> I tried to explain this to you that people are watching y'all <laughs> and you act like you don't say this Kim but the you guy he should have won this fight <laughs> listen Joshua is jo getting knocked out by Joshua <laughs> is like getting knocked out by um I don't know who to say but Joshua is not like like that you know what I'm saying he should not have lost the way he lost to Joshua anybody that knows boxing could say that if he if he fought so well against Tyson Fury, he is supposed to come out and even looking back and demolish Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua is looking for a reason to quit. You just got to give him a reason to quit. Well, I'll say this, and I just want to let you know what our listeners were were saying about you because. They say this. I'm still this, an this, expert, this Cam. Gets, I'm still an expert. This, this, no, this gets sent to me at least three times a week when you're oh wrong, and people goodness. will be like, "Damn, Mace." People don't think I'm that wrong, it Cam. Up, it, yeah, well, I'm not going to sit there saying thousands of people, but it's be a, it'd be a few dozen people. I mean, week. some sometimes I just sometimes we we're getting off the show, Cam. Like right now, I got I got a workout to go do, Cam. I got I got things, you know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I got things I'm not, to listen, do. Listen, I'm wrong. I'm <laughs> wrong too. But you, but you make yourself the super do back for look. When I say okay, this, from this, now on, quick, I'm gonna be I'm perfect. Gonna I'm glad you said that. From now on, I'm gonna be perfect. Keep the record, okay? From now on, I'm gonna be flat out perfect. You looking for perfection? You got it. Keep keep that energy, Cam. Cold Cam. It ain't me. Why? I'm playing somebody that said this. Why are you mad at me? I'm trying to tell you what the listeners are listening to. Because you digged in the garbage anyway, for it. You digged in the garbage for the receipts. Receipts. I, 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 I no, didn't. Mercy, <laughs> he brought the receipt. Nobody wanted to hear that trash. You, you, you digged in the garbage nope. for it and brought it to me. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, Mace. So Mace, I promise you, Mace, I promise you. I, I promise you I did not dig in the garbage for that shit. That shit was outside my door like Uber Eats. It was delivered <laughs> right to my door, bro. I didn't, I didn't have to go anywhere. It was like a nigga getting served with paperwork. That shit was right there. I didn't dig anywhere. It's in my tag. Come on, Stad. Help us <laughs> anyway, out, Stad. I mean, now, I was going to have to take real quick, before, yeah, real quick before I finish this topic, though, bro. Ryan Garcia, right after the fight, what he said was this, and I'm not saying verbatim because I don't have the quote in front of me, but he basically said, I hope you UFC niggas is learning, son. Stop coming over here and playing games with niggas. Y'all coming over here thinking it's a game and y'all be kicking and all that. We will fuck you up. So Ryan Garcia basically sent the message to Ngandu and the rest of the UFC fighters to think they can come over to box and they have success. That was his take after the fight. Yeah, I think I think we need to start doing some commentating for the UFC cam. Um, we're gonna look into I'm it. I'm with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely with that. We could do our due diligence and listen. Don't get it fucked up. No UFC. We're not saying we definitely gonna do it, and we're not gonna say that we know exactly what we're gonna what we're talking about yet. But if we dive into anything, we're gonna do our due diligence, pause, and make sure we know what we're talking about. The reason I'm saying this before we move on 
is because Stephen A. Smith, which is my brother, he had jumped into some UFC business and said that somebody was soft or something else, and the whole UFC kind of jumped on him. <laughs> oh. Talking about, yo, you know, you, we've been here for years. Y'all niggas don't know what you're, you little ESPN niggas come over here for two minutes and think y'all know what the fuck y'all talking about. This is years, blood, sweat, and tears. And, you know, Stephen A. defended himself well, but, you know, they kind of took offense to niggas just trying to jump in their business. Yeah. So just letting UFC fans know, if we do end up commentating or indulging on UFC, we're not coming in blindsided. We're going to do our homework and due diligence to make sure we know what the fuck we're talking about and not disrespect nobody. Oh, Cam, I already know about UFC, but feel free to do your due diligence. I'll meet you there. Who you, who's who's <laughs> the ranked number one rank, rank fighter now? Cam, I, number one? I don't have time for this, Cam. For this real. Is why the, you, this yeah. is why I made that but, disclaimer. But this is exactly why. I this definitely, is exactly why I, I know made this UFC. Because you playing I know games UFC already. You playing better games than with these I know boxing. Already. I know you, UFC you play, better than I know who boxing, is Cam. The, all right, let me ask you this. Who's the number one ranked boxer right now? Cam, I know this better than I know I'm, boxing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm asking you, but who's I stayed the number up one all night. boxer right I now? stayed up all night for years watching these fights, Cam. I'm into jiu-jitsu. <laughs> Go, DJ. <laughs> Look ask like, Nick, <laughs> ask Nick, 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 we I, going to the yo, gym. I'm not asking. Practicing arm yo, bars listen, and I'm all of that. I'm asking you. Do you think Terrence Crawford is the number one ranked fighter right now? Is he number one? I'm asking. Or is, or is Canelo number one? Cameron, if they have Canelo number one, that's DuckTales. Crawford is the best boxer right now until proven different. He's ranked number one. They go to expert again. I'm telling you. No, they go to expert. So See, I, I could... No, I can pause. I, I can feel it, Cam. Pause. I'm an expert. I can sense it. No, I gave you an option. Since you didn't want to answer, I gave you A and B. I said it's Canelo or Crawford. You didn't want to answer until then. Cameron, Reason every time I have a dream, you, every you, time I have a know. dream, you rain on my parade. Listen, it's the <laughs> UFC. Now. You're going with me to the UFC. And we're going to be commenting. You don't have I'm to, you, don't have to you, shoot down my aspirations. I, 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 yeah, I apologize, Martin Luther King. Listen, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is this. Who is the number one ranked pound for pound fighter in the UFC since you know UFC better than boxing? You know who's number one in boxing. Who's number one in the UFC? Yeah. I got it. I got it. If you I, know UFC better, you said you know UFC better, you should know who's ranked number one. Who's number one? Kim, I can't be triggered. You know, a lot of the Think things you do it, is just trigger me, Cam. Disclaimers. Cam, I did, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to be triggered by you. When I, when I don't answer the question, because then you'll think you can always trigger me to give you the answer you want. And I'm not going to I'm right, not going to build that up, you know? This is exactly why I gave the disclaimer <laughs> to the UFC people. We don't mean no disrespect, man. None at all. <laughs> well, we are definitely at time. So that's all the time we have for today. Thanks Yo, for hold watching. Hold on, hold on. Let's still do, let, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's still do the do the um You wanna do women's shit. today? That shit was lit. Okay. Yeah, yeah that shit okay. was lit this weekend. We got it. Okay, do that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so South Carolina won the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament against LSU 79 to 72 in a pretty heated game. A fight broke out. What did you guys think about the turn of events? Um I think I think it got a little too crazy when a guy jumps over the the clear the <laughs> part to fight women. That's that's when it's getting too crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like that's when it's getting too crazy. Like, what was, what were you gonna do? Like, good so, thing they stopped them because yeah. if he would have got past that and and knocked just one girl out, right, his life would have been over as he knows it, right. What do you think, Killer? I th you know, girls, you know, guys pushing. That's different, but when. Girls pushing, that's different. But when girls are fighting and a guy jumps in, 
That's always a bad idea. And I know there's guys that do that, but that's bad. That's that's all bad. That's all bad. There's definitely niggas who do that. Yeah. Now you see it, I'm wondering. Yeah. <laughs> Look, um, yo, bigger than that game this weekend for women, this solidif this weekend solidified that I'm going to the women's final four. I will be in clear. Yeah. This weekend was crazy. The whole weekend was crazy because the day before the championship between South Carolina and LSU, South Carolina won with a buzzer beater. Yeah. And, and Camilla, uh, I'm making sure I'm pronouncing her name right, she never shot. She never had a three this whole Camilla. season. Yeah. So far, yeah, yeah, Camilla, she, she sat there with 1.1 second left. They didn't even guard her. They didn't even guard her. She hit the three to go to this game yesterday with LSU. And, you know, you got to give Dawn Stanley a lot of credit. Undefeated this far. I know I've been a lot of tight games as well. But to keep her cool like she does, like even yesterday, day before yesterday, pardon me, when they, they hit the buzzer beater, they knew they didn't have no timeouts to make any substitutions. And Dawn Stanley... They asked what to do. The center looked at her like this, Camilla, that is. And she said, yo, shoot that shit. You know the confidence that is? You ain't shoot, yeah. you ain't hit a three all season. And your coach tell you, yo, shoot, yo, shoot that shit, yo. Cause they ain't gonna guard you. They didn't think she see mm -hmm. the shooter and they won. Um, amazing. Uh, yesterday. So, um, congratulations to South Carolina. I think that was amazing. Not only that, we, I, I just really wish Caitlin Clark didn't have to leave college. Game after game after game, she just goes, she's just impressing me more and more. So, where I don't care what you say, Mace, she needs to get to the Mavericks workout. <laughs> Mark Cuban, the only owner that's going to give her a shot, man. This girl is crazy. The story of the year, the two stories of the year is South Carolina being undefeated and Clay, Caitlin Clark just breaking every fucking record imaginable. Every record. They listen, even against Tennessee and in in the, in I think it's the Big Ten Championship. If I'm not mistaken, pardon me if it isn't. Um, she had four points in the first half. She had to turn it on and score 30 in the second half in the midst of breaking every type of male or female college record there is. So I'm really excited for not just South Carolina as a team, but just to watch Caitlin Clark rise above and I don't want to use it just Angel Reese, but any of the other peers that she had last year to where a point is like, don't even talk to me when it comes to them niggas. Yeah. Like when it comes to Caitlin Clark, don't even really talk about no other female basketball players that can fuck with her, period. You know, if she don't score 30, 35, 40, 47, they won't win. And she knows that. And what's even more crazy is that the other team knows that and can't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. You know who you got to guard all season, and you can't do nothing about it. I was really excited this weekend that passed uh, women's college basketball. And, and no disrespect to the men, but I had a choice to watch either or. I watched all the women games, man. It was crazy. Shout out to both South Carolina and Iowa as they won their championship as well. Um, exciting weekend for female basketball. That's what I said. And then just for more context, so the, the guy that did hop over, you know, the stands, that was Flage's brother because Camilla did knock her down to the ground. Um, but if you look at the replay, I have my own thoughts about it because Flage was hitting a lot of people on her team. So I see why it happened. But she did. He did come to, I guess, defend his sister after seeing her get knocked out like that. But no man should ever put his hands on a girl. I don't know what he thought he was going to yes, do. That. And then I think when he walked up to Camilla and saw her 6'7 self, he was like, so he wasn't even going to do nothing. I think he went to Yeah, because if up, he but. ran up to her and she two-pieced him <laughs> and he went out, <laughs> that would be even crazy. That's what would have happened, though, because he looked up crazy. and was like, yeah, he knew. So he said, this tree going to fall <laughs> on <laughs> This tree going to fall yeah, on you. It was a lot. Um, but yeah. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh,